I used to be such an angry person and so violent. And like, I used to think, like you said, I'm like, well, this is just who I am. And I remember when I saw that, that shamanic healer back then, she's like, you're not, you're not a violent person. You're not an angry person. You have so much pain. And at that time, I didn't correlate that, right? Because I'm like, I'm not pain. I'm tough. You know, like I'm from New York. Don't mess with me. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world. And the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity. And it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. All right, love. So we are going to get a little spiritual, a little spiritual healing in this week's episode. And um, I want to do this because I think it can be, I think we can get really obsessed as recovering perfectionists and overachievers with like a checklist, check, 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 check. And then there's comes across some things we just can't check off. Uh, maybe you're frustrated with yourself because you've been like doing the work and like you're just still reacting a way you don't want to react to something. And oftentimes as those things are ingrained and you didn't even teach yourself that, like someone else taught you. And I'm not saying that to get you off the hook because you're not off the hook. It's like it's your work to do. But if you've been doing all the things to get to change something you want to change in your life and it's not changing, then doing the same thing over and over again is just the definition of insanity. So our guest this week is Diana Min, and she actually, you're, I think you're going to resonate with her so much, y'all, because she shares her story about how she was raised, the woman she was in New York, um, what she, what, what happened in her rock bottom that got her to where she is. And then also we get into what she's doing now and um, how she made the transition from being like corporate girl to like, I'm a healer now and let's go and do into my ayahuasca. And like, what was that like? Because wow, what a transition that would be. And then we also get into how she manifested the man that she's with. And it's actually a really cool story. So I love stories like this, because especially if you are single, you're like, I can't meet someone. Like there are so many ways to randomly meet someone. There really, really are. And I, I cannot wait for to hear how this happened because it's a sign that it's possible for you. Never underestimate the power of some weird free app. So, <laughs> so anyways, Um, thank you so much for being a listener of this podcast. I want to, I know I say that at the end of every show, but I really do mean it. I want to just take a moment to say thank you. Um, this show is growing because of you. And when you download the show, (laughs) it counts. People actually count it and it affects, it allows us to, um, get sponsors, get new listeners, get things like that. And if you're like, I don't want to sponsor, well, it's like, well, these things cost money. And so having other people sponsor the show means we can just bring more great content, bigger guests, better guests, more crazy, amazing information for you. So because of you, we are growing. And I just want to say thank you. Because if you ever are doubting, like, what am I doing on this planet? Well, right now you're supporting an amazing show that's hoping to inspire you, help you be it till you see it and help others do the same. So thank you. And now here is Diana Mint. All right, be it, babe. I'm so excited because one of your favorite guests, um, Kate Hudson, referred this amazing guest to us today. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful inside and out. And well, actually, she's going to tell you her whole entire journey, but I really wanted to have her because we haven't had anyone talk about this in a long time. And I, the way she brings up what she's so good at is so specific and you can actually do it. And she's living the life that she talks about. So Diana, man, will you tell everyone who you are and what you're rocking at? Hi, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me. Um, So I'm Diana Min. I'm an empowerment coach. I'm a spiritual mentor. I help people overcome their trauma. I help people really work through their inner blockages so that they can step into their power and really live the life that they were destined to live here. And I mean, a lot of my work really stems from my own journey of healing and everything that I've led myself through. And now I get to support other people on that journey as well. So let's talk about like how to, because I mean, like, it's not when you go to college, spiritual coach is not really something that you could to check. So like, <laughs> yeah, how did you, I, how did one, how does one become there? Like what drew, what drew you in? What was the, what was the, you know, impetus? Yeah. I mean, it was my own journey of healing, right? So I'm from New York. So I was raised by a bipolar narcissistic mother that I was viciously abused by my whole life. And so I came out with a slew of uh, things to work on. I had borderline personality disorder, PTSD, anxiety, depression. I was an alcoholic, a drug addict. I mean, I had OCD, 
the list goes on. I had all all the letters and I uh, really was trying to essentially subconsciously almost kill myself the way I was living my life at the time in New York. Um, I was achieving externally, right? Because that's what abused children do. We we achieve for validation and, and you know, um, work to perform for love. And so I was doing that and I felt so empty and miserable and nothing I was doing on an external level, no matter how much money I was making, I no much how much I was climbing my corporate job and, you know, how many vacations I took, like nothing was filling that void inside of me. And it got to a point where I was like, um, kind of want to kill myself, but I feel like I need to ask for help. And so I sought out a shamanic healer myself uh, when I was living in New York. And, you know, I had no idea about the spiritual world at the time. I had an inkling, right? But I had no idea what it really consisted of until I started working with this woman in Brooklyn. And lots of shamanic healing. If anybody knows, you want me to- No, you got to talk because I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, <laughs> like I, I think many people going from like overachiever, overachiever, burnout, the next step isn't like shamanic healer. Usually, like usually, like the next step is like antidepressants. You know, okay. more more things. So, like, yeah, how how did like let's talk about the shamanic healer, what what they are, and like how you got there. Yeah, I, it was honestly so it, divine alignment, right? Because I had a girlfriend that sent me her healer's number, and literally all it said was healer, and there was no name, there was nothing. <laughs> And I was in the middle of like a like a mental breakdown, right? I just called this number. I'm like crying on the phone. I'm like, I don't know who you are, but I need help. And she's like, who are you? You know, and it was just one of those things where it's like, I had no idea what she did, but she said she could help me. So I went to go see her. Shamanic healing deals within the, the, the spirit realm, right? So a lot of the things that we carry within ourselves, trauma, it is energetic, right? They're not physical wounds we can see anymore, but they're emotional wounds. They're deep mental, psychological wounds. And, and those have a frequency, they have an energy and they're most likely lodged into our spiritual body, our emotional body. And because these layers are obviously invisible and not tangible, we, we don't believe that they're there until we really up to feel what happens when they're lifted from us, mm -hmm. right? And we feel the lightness of ourselves and we feel ourselves starts coming back into life. We start to feel uh, more enjoyment in our lives, more fulfillment in our lives, right? And we've just food tastes better. Everything looks more beautiful, right? That's kind of how it was for me. Like I had no idea what she was doing. There's some rattling, there's some drumming, you know what I mean? I'm laying in, I'm laying in her living room, crystals all over me. I take like a three hour nap. I wake up. I don't know what's going on. You know, like, did I really know what was happening? Absolutely not. I just knew I started to feel so much more alive and better and lighter, less heavy, right? Less mm -hmm. dense. And so she eventually would lead me into my first ayahuasca ceremony. And that was really what kicked things into high gear for me. I became sober uh, after that first ceremony. So I've now been sober for about eight years. And um, just immediately everything started to, to change in my physical life outside of that, right? Because once you start to work with the sacred plant, um, Abuelita, great grandmother, she starts to really open up pathways in your life that weren't there before. And so I started to really understand that, you know, all the trauma that I had experienced in my life was given to me as a gift for me to grow stronger and more resilient and to transcend it and become something. I didn't know at the time, right? What? But, um, and then I would find myself serendipitously in a second ayahuasca ceremony, like a month later. And we did was it twice because of what feels like a journey. I've heard the journeys. <laughs> I've done it at this point over 200 times. Yeah. Really? I, I didn't know. Okay. So, we, okay. I want to get sidetracked. So you did it a, a, a month later. Let's go back to your journey. And then I want to go into yeah. why I've done it 200 yeah. times. Yeah. A month later, I found myself, obviously, again, coincidentally, in a second one in which I was told I was going to move to California. And then I was like, that's a weird thought. And then a week later, I got fired from my job. A week later, my relationship ended in like a firestorm. And I had to move out, find a new place. And just everything started to align. I moved to San Diego with four boxes to my name, new identity, newly sober, I have no idea what's going on. And just everything was just aligned and clicking. And I landed here and I was like, 
I have no idea what just happened to me. And I just began to follow the path, right? Like I've gone to Peru. I've worked with shamans in the jungle, in the Sacred Valley. I, I continue to follow the work with the medicine for me. That's where the answers really lie for me. And I continue to do my own work in the spiritual realm as far as like becoming a Reiki master, becoming a yoga teacher, right? Like doing, you know, I've done 10 day silent meditations. Like I've continued to explore all the healing modalities in the spiritual realm like everything, right? Because for me, it was about healing myself. Over time, I started organizing ayahuasca retreats and ceremonies, um, you know, all over the place because I wanted to share this medicine with other people. And then I kind of grew a reputation in that community. And so then people were coming to me, asking me for support before their ceremonies, after their ceremonies. And so I realized I, I was being an integration coach. And so then I just continued to really understand, oh, I've actually done a lot of my own work and I can support people on their journey now because, you know, I've walked it and then I built a multi-six figure business doing that. And now <laughs> that's so that's so that's crazy. So that's how you got to where you are, because it was like one like little one stepping stone at a time. Yes. Um, And it sounds like you're like, OK, I'll start and I'll get this training and I'll get this training. You've been like adding in. So how long ago did you move to California? How long have you been doing this? I moved to California in 2016. So that like seven years ago. And then I first started working with the medicine in 2015. Mm, so very cool. Yeah. So, okay. So you've done ayahuasca 200 times. Does it have the same effect each time? Or is like now that you're cleansed, it's like a, you're, it's almost like, like an enlightening message. Like you got to move to California. Yeah, it's more like an oil change, like a tune-up, right? Because life happens, right? And we're continuing, we're continually picking up new things that we might need to release from us, right? Relationships end or, you know, new levels, new devils is kind of what I call it, right? Every time you're trying to expand into a new level, you're going to hit blockages of either your inner self or your belief systems or things that you've inherited from your ancestors, right? And so you're always going to have to expand into a bigger version of your yourself to to reach those new levels of success of abundance of whatever it is that you're achieving in your life and so for me I'm I'm a self-development junkie right it's like I'm always trying to grow I'm always trying to be better and you know we're never done learning we're never done healing and we're multi-layered beings, right? There's a, there was a time, you know, two, three years in on my journey, I was like, I'm probably fully healed. Like I'm, I'm probably all done. Right. And then like, I went to an ayahuasca ceremony and like, we peel back this layer and there's all this like, you know, like bugs and like little grubbies under there. And you're like, Oh, let's look under here. Like, yeah, I'm not done. Like that all. one <laughs> closet, like Monica had in friends, like that one closet that no one went into. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I, I love that you brought that up because it is true. Like I think People can listen and go, oh, my God, she's like a spiritual healer. She's got it all figured out. And it's like, ish, we all do. And then there's always like, and there is another level. And you're having to strengthen the skill sets you have gotten yes. already. And in doing that, it always will bring up a little bit of something else that like, you know, just like, because it's, it's, it's a, it's like going to the gym. Like you can bicep curl 15 pounds. It's gonna be hard. And then it's gonna be easy. And then when you go to hit 20, it's going to go back to being hard and it's easy. Yeah. And so you have like, there's a little bit like when people get upset, two steps forward, one step back, it's like, yeah, of course, because you get to go check out the view and go, oh yeah, I'm glad I left this place. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I mean, that's what makes life exciting, right? You never get to a place where you're like, this is, this is good enough. And I'm going to sit here. There's always a desiring of more of growth mm -hmm. and expansion, right? And that's why we get to continually learn and, and explore our inner worlds, our outer worlds and, yeah. and everything in between. So I want to talk because like, this can all sound really fine and dandy, but like, how does someone know that they should be out working with a spiritual healer versus like therapy or somatics or something like that? Like, what's the what's the bright line? Like you like had this, like, you know, your rock bottom in your phone. It's like healer, here you go. Like, here's your next step. But how, like with someone listening going, oh, that's actually maybe the next step for me. Yeah. Um, I feel like if you are intuitively called and hopefully you have some level of relationship with your intuition, right? How does it feel in your body? That's kind of how I like make most of my decisions. Is it a full body? Yes. Or is it a full body? No. Or is it sometimes if you're on the fence, right? For me, that's a no. A full body yes is like, yes, I'm going. Like, I can't wait. So excited, right? And 
Here's the thing. I also have a therapist, but she's also a very spiritual therapist, right? Like she's also done ayahuasca with me. So it's like we're it depends like what you're looking for. I think you need a you're looking for a healer, a coach, somebody that's working in the spiritual realm. If you understand that traditional therapy has not worked for you. Because mm-hmm. I was in traditional therapy for a while when I was in New York and, and on my healing journey. And it just was not hitting the layers that I needed it to hit. Yeah, it wasn't like breaking down like the barriers barriers of like what was built up inside it was causing you yeah not to like make the decisions that you were making that got you where you were right right I felt like I was just kind of spinning my wheels and not really getting anywhere and seeing real progress in my life and so I was like there's got to be something deeper and that's what that you know caused me to go seek some other alternative support which you know I think everybody should try right to see and and understand and then if it doesn't work for you then it's cool you learn something right yeah yeah so I mean I don't know that this is stuff is like woo woo but it can feel very like two woos for people like it can be like right. they're like willing to have a couple crystals but then like you know it's like, like do you do you think how would you like to describe would you wish that spiritual healing was not a, a woo woo thing would you like it to be considered like more than that or are you like nope it's one thousand percent in the woo world and that's where we love to hang out No. Well, if you follow any of my work, a lot of my work is actually regarding like quantum physics. So I talk about energy in the sense of like um, in the quantum realm, like energy, vibration, like that is all quantifiable, right? Like if you follow Dr. Joe Dispenza, like he's proven it through science that all of this is real. Like there is nothing woo about it. It's actually backed by science that like your thoughts are sending out a vibration, which then attracts back a reality of that same resonance. So um, no, I don't believe it's woo at all. I think that if people dig a little bit deeper, they'll understand that we are vibrational beings and we're constantly sending out a signal with how we feel and what and we're constantly attracting to us whatever it is that we're focusing on. And and a lot of times subconsciously we have energies that we've inherited from our birth mother, our parents, our ancestors, right? Because if you think about on a on like on a biological level, when you're in your mother's womb, you are absorbing all of her DNA. You're absorbing all of her emotions, everything she's ingesting, you know, her her emotional diet, her physical diet, you're taking it all in and not just from her, but also your father and, and all of this, the DNA that they've inherited. So you're coming out with, uh, sometimes I work with a lot of clients, the wounds that they're working through or the blockages that they're working through or their beliefs that they're working through, they have no idea where they have picked it up from because they didn't. They It was actually, they were born with it. Yeah. And that's kind of our job in in this incarnation, right? Is to really work through the entanglement that we have received and then create and, and move beyond what our parents were able to accomplish so that we can then lay a foundation for the next generation to build on top of that. Yeah. I mean, you're totally right. Cause it was like the book, like what happened to you? And it's like very clear, like you, like how your brain develops is based on like from the back to the front. And so if your care is inconsistent, the first three months, it's going to yeah. change entirely how you see the world and the energies you put out. And it's, can you recreate the brain? Yeah, you can. If like, if you have people who recognize it like at an early age, but good luck if your parents were the ones who were inconsistent and your care and that's time. So like what I'm hearing you say, like we, we come up like, that's just how I am. Like, I think that's like the worst sentence anyone can ever say. It's like a death sentence to growth. Like, this is just how I am. But actually, like, if you can understand, like, I don't know why I'm doing these things this way and I don't want to do them that way anymore you know, having, um, having the opportunity to work with someone who can help peel back layers that you didn't actually know that you built because you didn't, because someone else did it for you. Like, of mm-hmm. course, like it makes a lot of sense to me when you're like, I don't even know what that came from. It's like, well, if you didn't put it there, yeah. <laughs> you can't really take it away. You don't really know that it was, you don't know where it starts. Right. And exactly. I used to be such an angry person and so violent and like, I used to think, like you said, I'm like, well, this is just who I am. And I remember when I saw that, that shamanic healer back then, she's like, you're not, you're not a violent person. You're not an angry person. You have so much pain. And at that time I didn't correlate that. Right. 
because I'm like, I'm not paying. I'm tough, you know, like I'm from New York. Don't mess with me, you know. And, mm-hmm. and now I'm like the most sensitive, like loving, compassionate person. But because it wasn't who I was, it was the defenses that I had built up to my environment. It was the trauma that it that was almost glitching out my system. Right. Yeah. And who I and who I was was buried underneath that. Yeah. And so I feel like if you're going to work with a spiritual healer, any type of energetic work or a more holistic healing, what it's really doing is peeling back the layers of who you're not so that you can remember the truth of who you are. Yeah. So I want to go back to um, like you transitioned to this because obviously like being in the corporate world, being a New Yorker, like yeah. go, go, go. And then yeah. to like slowly transition to this person who's an empowerment and spiritual healer. How, like, what were the steps you took to like feel confident in doing that because one of the reasons this show exists is that so many people are like this is where I want to go but this is where I am and yeah. I have to wait to be deemed you know like from yeah. someone that I'm there and I'm like no you actually don't need to wait for the there's no one deeming you like unless you're actually going to see the queen like which she's not around anymore no one's actually taking a sword and deeming you anything like you actually have to take that for yourself so like what was that journey like for you oh it was horrible it was so hard I think I cried every step of the way <laughs> Because I had this huge fear of being seen, this huge fear of being heard, right? Like I did not believe in my skills. Like people would tell me all the time, like, yeah, you should put out videos online and talk about spiritual healing. And I'm like, who's going to want to listen to me? I don't know anything, right? Like I was always just like dimming my light because I was so scared of being judged and criticized and, and failing, right? I think the pivotal point for me was hiring support, hiring a coach or a mentor and having them reflect back to me my power. Because a lot of times you can't see yourself in that light when you're stuck in your very limited, you know, perspective of who you are and what you're capable of. Right. And I would always find like at the right time, right. Somebody that's just like calling me forward into my power and, and kind of holding my hand along the way until I felt strong enough or I started to get, you know, my legs going where I could do it on my own. And that's really what it is. I feel like people, um, are scared sometimes to ask for help. And I really don't feel like we can do it alone. I didn't do it alone. I know anybody that's built something great has not done it alone, right? And so, um, yeah, asking for support, I think, is is key. Mm-hmm. Because trying to go at it alone, you're going to get faced with all of your, you know, all your shadows. And then you're going to say, I mean, for what happened to me for a long time, I would just hide, hide back into my little hole. And be like, yeah. you know what? Do it. Never mind. Right. Yeah. But if you have somebody that's holding you accountable, that's like, no, 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 we're still going. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a little hiccup. Let's keep, let's keep walking. Right. Um, and not feeling alone on that journey is, is really powerful. Yeah. No, I think that's really great advice. I'm wondering, like, as you're saying all of that, cause my brain was like, well, I wonder how she found the person. So I guess my next question for you is like, how do people find a spiritual healer that's right for them? Because obviously like, like anything, like a mate, <laughs> like this is the person that's peeling back the layers. Like, I don't want some weird yeah. cult leader. I actually want. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate to say that, but like also like, you know, so ha, like yeah. what what are people Googling? Like what are they how would they know that this is the right healer for them? Yeah, that would be another thing that I would say. Check in with your body and look at people's testimonials, you know, have a consultation with them. Look at they've helped other people that are in similar situations. I say testimonials, 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 because checking in with their past results and seeing how they've led other people through a transformation or through, you know, to the, to their next level and seeing, does that resonate with you? Does that feel like, like I'm aligned with that? Right. Because I've definitely hired people where I'm like, never working with that person again. Right. And so that's kind of what you kind of go through, right. You're like, that, oh, I didn't listen to myself then. And that's the outcome that I got. But a lot of times, like it was either a full body yes, or it was just kind of like, because I get people like that in my world all the time. They're like, I don't know what you do and I don't know how you do it, but I just feel resonance with you. And I just feel like I need to work with you. I'm yeah. like, trust that queen. Let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think like also I would say like, are the people that you're, that are giving the testimonials, are they like out and about doing the like p- things in the world or are they like all stuck in like a, a, a commune together that, 
<laughs> you know, like that's a might be if they're like out doing their goals and their dreams, probably a good healer. And if they're like wow. living with the person and they're not allowed to leave, that's a sign. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and like, you know, I think people might be hearing like, oh, trust my God, I don't know how to trust my body. Like one of the things, I don't know, you might have a tip for this. One of the things that I heard someone say was like, have someone ask you like very true, easy, yes, no questions and like just feel what that feels like and then literally have them tell you ask you a question and you lie about it or like, you know what I mean? Like you, and you'll feel instantly like what your body does when it like, it's a no, but you've said yes. Or, um, yeah. you know, like, so you can really figure out like, cause we are uh, like most people walk around very disassociated from their body, their mind and their body are not really there. And so they don't know how to trust that. So they can get easily convinced and unsure. And like, that's just one of the ways that I was able to feel like I'm having like I'm having resistance here and I don't know why. So it's a no right now. And I can go explore that later. I don't need to be talked into it at this moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good trick. Yeah. Or having somebody ask you really fast. Yes or no questions. You want to have a sandwich? No. <laughs> Do you yep. want to work with a coach? No. OK. Just that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you're like one of my listeners, like I'm so indecisive and a people pleaser. All right. I'm going to be really honest. You still know the yes or no, because people pleasing is just like a form of control. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like you do and you, you don't outsource that kind of power, but like there's ways of figuring it out. Um, okay. So now what are you so excited about? Like, what do you, what are you being until you see right now? Is there anything that you're, you're trying to stretch yourself to do? Is there a, another evolution you're going through? What's going on right now? Yeah. I mean, constant evolution always. Um, I am doing a retreat to Peru in June. So this Fun. is my first international retreat and I'm like super excited. I've it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I've been, you know, kind of doing the local thing. And now we're like, all right, we're going to the motherland. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um yeah, I am with I I I beat until I see that my husband, my my soulmate, my <laughs> what? You're yeah. getting married? Well, he's basically the person I have been manifesting for the past 10 years. That's crazy. That's amazing. Can you yeah. tell everyone how that is? Because we have lots of single listeners. So they're, they're oh like, my God. What? we want notes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I have been writing down this person for so long. And every time I would get into a relationship, I would be like, oh, I missed something. Right. Like when you're making a list, right. You're like, oh, I forgot to emotionally aware. Right. Like, oh, yes. I forgot to put that. Come healed. Right. So Every time I had a failed relationship, I would refine the list and I would like add things that I'm like, oh, I forgot to put that in the last one. And so this person found my my man found me um, on an astrology app called The Pattern. And it's a dating app for people in astrology or no, it's just like you were just on there as a profile app that has a dating aspect to it that you have to pay premium for that I did not pay premium for. But wow. <laughs> but I decided to put my profile up there anyway. But because I wasn't going to pay premium, I was never going to see any of the messages. Right. So I said, here's my IG since I'm never coming back on this app again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he I put my profile up there at like 1130 at night on a lonely Saturday night. And he downloaded the app on 1145 that same night. No. And found on there swear to god and we he found me on ig he's also walking the medicine pad so he works with you know ayahuasca in like a different capacity with a different group and we just like met and realized like he was manifesting me i was manifesting him we showed each other the list <laughs> oh my gosh you know and we were just like perfect and we've been together ever since so the the stretching of that is like coming into well eventual motherhood right and and us really like growing a family together and and doing this work together which is also something i've manifested for a long time as a, a partner on the spiritual path right to do it together and um, to like raise like a conscious family, things like that. So that's on my list. And then um, writing a book, I've, I've been called to write a book about, you know, my journey with the medicine and all the healing, the holistic healing that I've done because, you know, um, full transparency, when I was in New York, I was a part at the time that wanted me to get on medication. And I was just kind of like, mm, no, I'm going to holistically heal myself. And I had a lot of resistance and people that really doubted my ability to do that. Right. Yeah. And I did that. So I want to actually share my story so people can know that they have options and and they don't need to get on medication if that's more harmful. We have an amazing guest I just had on well, I, I'm at, at this point where, where it is in the lineup at all. We interviewed him this, earlier this year. 
he literally teaches you how to like he can have people write the book based on the stuff you've already written or you can write it yourself. But like he's basically like a book papa and like helps you like make yourself a best bestseller because he's been one multiple times like it, you everyone ever I believe everyone can write a book um, and should because you have a story to tell people whether it's your poetry or fiction or nonfiction. But like mm-hmm. the whole entire reason the human race exists to this day is because we have the ability to tell story. So I yes. think it's really cool. I think you should do it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm yeah. working <laughs> oh, I love it so much. All right. We're going to take a brief break and find out um, how people can work with you, find you, follow you, go to prove with you. All right. So Diana, where do you like to hang out? Um, is it still IG? <laughs> Should we have to go to this astrology app to find you? <laughs> I'm off the astrology. Well, I'm off the dating portion of the astrology app now. <laughs> I'm off the market. Um, I'm on Instagram at the Urban Indigo. I'm on TikTok at the Urban Indigo. I'm on YouTube at the Urban Indigo Facebook. And you can also visit my website, theurbanindigo.com, which is currently getting updated. So new new stuff coming uh, soon. But yeah, I mean, I I mostly share a lot of my stuff um, on Instagram and TikTok, but you can also join my mailing list to just really get uh, first dibs on things like retreats and new offers that I have. I love it. Okay. Before I let you go, you enlightened us in so many ways, but bold, executable, intrinsic targeted steps people can take to be it till they see it. What do you have for us? Okay. So I would say find somebody that is already doing what you're doing and stalk them and see if they offer trainings or see who they were trained by. Go look into what their journey was and what they did to get to where they are and start to take those similar steps. Because I actually train a lot of coaches and I actually give them the same steps that I took. I said, go get Reiki certified, open up your intuition, start to do work that way, right? Like, start to organize events. If you want to do spiritual events, like I just give them everything that I've done. And I've had a lot of people have a lot of success just from following my footsteps, right? So go find somebody you admire and start to follow in their footsteps because most likely they started one step at a time. And sometimes when we're looking at a big picture or like this big goal, it can be very intimidating. So one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, blinders on and just focus on saying the step you're in. Oh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Y'all like so many people are like, you know, how did you do what you did? And like, first of all, a lot of things like I'm doing are not what a normal ply suit teacher has done. But how did I get to be where I was in the ply world? I just looked at the people I admired and I was like, well, what did they do before that? OK, let me look at their bio. OK, let me go over. The- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <we're exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, oh, that's really uh, tangible. You guys are it's actionable. I hope you try it out. Um, Diana, this has been so fun and so enlightening. And, and I've been like, I've, I've always wanted to ask somebody these questions. So I'm just so grateful that we got to meet um, everyone. How are you going to use these tips in your life? Make sure you tag the Urban Indigo. You tag the Be It Pod. You share this with a friend and let us know if you end up using her tips to take it to the next step and be in it till you see it. Until next time. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. If you want to leave us a message or a question that we might read on another episode, you can text us at plus one three one zero nine zero five 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 three four or send a DM on Instagram at Be It Pod. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your hosts, Leslie Logan and me, Brad Crowell. It is transcribed, produced, and edited by the epic team at Desenio.co. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music and our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all of our content to our website. And finally, to Meredith Root for keeping us all on point and on time.